Be back. Yeah, welcome back to it. And thank you, Jonathan, for having us on the show once again. So, Jonathan, tell us what are we going to be talking about today? So, today we're going to be talking about independence. Assessment. I don't know if you guys heard. Oh yes, Jonathan, we've heard, we've heard. Have you heard the news, Timothy and David? Yeah, yeah, I have. So, do you want to inform us, Jonathan? <coughs> So I'll just inform the audience, uh, sorry about that, Jonathan, but this was a big straight. There's no more in the film that's good, good job, good job to all those that got involved. Um, so how does that make you feel, uh, Jonathan? Well, it's a relief because I was feeling the words that a lot of participants would be kicked off the scheme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds exciting, man. Um, mm -hmm. Look. I, I, I felt really, I really felt that uh, kind of excitement when I heard the news. And also, I want to congratulate all those advocates that spent their time, you know, writing a letter to the minister. And I, what are your thoughts on that, Timothy? How do you feel? Um, I think it's really good that they've said that they're going to, like, cancel the independent assessments as they stand but i'm also cautious because they say that they are going to come up with some sort of alternative so the alternative is what i'm, I'm keen to see oh yeah yeah um so, yeah me too me too um this thing isn't going away uh we just gotta be cautious of that thanks for pointing that out timothy um, yeah, look, we, but I guess uh, it's, up to, it's up to us as a community to come together and raise our voices and advocate for ourselves. So, like I say, uh, bring it on. And so, um, if they want to continue going down that path, then we as disability advocates are ready to stand up for our rights. And I guess uh, we are ready to, you know, take control of our lives and not be in control of others. Uh, welcome, David. Are you with us? No, David, there's some IT issues going on. So, Tim, what did you think about the way independence Hello, everyone. will be talked about in the media? 
I think the way. Um... I, it'd be, I'll... Oh, yeah, sorry, go on. To... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry for that. David, David. David. Are, you, are you with are us? You with us? <laughs> okay, sorry about that um, interruption. Timothy, continue. Nah, that's okay. That's, that's the joy of modern technology, isn't it? It never works when you need it to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, my thoughts on how the reporting has gone. Excuse me while I let this bird out, because she wants to get out and she'll scream the house down if I don't. <laughs> no worries. But, uh, look, I'm, I'm happy to jump in. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Jonathan, what was the question? Oh, there you go. Turn this back. All right, I'm back. Uh, got rid of the birds, so now I can actually speak without her wanting to scream. Um, but yeah, my thoughts on the reporting around um, independent assessments being cancelled. It's been relatively positive, but uh, there has been a few, um, I guess, media outlets that haven't used very positive terms. And... Um, one in particular, I won't name them, so we don't get ourselves into any trouble, but um, I'd say it's a more conservative paper that's um, titled after the country and quite, quite um, well read. But the way that they referred to uh, people with disabilities wasn't uh, correct. They used the terms that we call othering. So uh, in short, they were referring to us as the disabled, which... Uh, is, is not on and that's not on because it puts us you know in this sort of bracket where we're seen as like less than or an excluded group but also in uh, this piece that i read um they were saying that the canning of the independent assessments was a bad thing because apparently um the ndi is apparently hemorrhaging money and, and a waste of taxpayer dollars according to this um paper that i read so that's only been like one thing, but uh, the rest have been quite good and, and in support of scrapping the independent assessment. So, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I agree with you too. Yeah. Kind of makes us feel like we're less valued. We're not important, you know, um, categorizing everyone as, you know, as a being like an object rather than a human being. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's also important to point out because um, the, the argument that it's popped up in not just this paper that I read, but a few um, media outlets take this stance of that the NDIS is like a, a waste of money or people are uh, abusing the system and, and, you know, wasting taxpayer dollars. It's not a case of that at all. If we didn't have the NDIS in place, it would be costing taxpayers a lot more because people with disabilities wouldn't be getting the support they need. And, you know, with that, their health would get worse, so then they end up in hospital or, or even worse, and that would be even more cost to uh, taxpayers. So to have a system in place where we are supporting people with disabilities to make sure they don't end up in situations with poor health or poor living conditions. I think it's really vital that we have more disabled voices in in this space, and in particular, I it doesn't sit right with me that um, like the head of NDIS or whatever you want to call her isn't a person with a disability. I think a person with a disability, or not just a person with a disability, multiple people with disabilities should be in that space making the decisions, because at the end of the day, we're the ones that have the lived experience, but also we understand what others could go through. And I don't feel like an able-bodied person in parliament knows what is right for a disabled person living like an average Joe type thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I agree. And I do see a reason why the CEO of the agency can't be sort of in a way elected by parties? 
different because I do get our government appointed can necessarily represent participants. Exactly, and from the, from my understanding, the NDIS when it came around was designed to help people with disability live the lives they want to choose. Uh, they have the, the voice patrol and um, also, uh, oh, I forgot the third one, and having choice as well. And the NDIS was designed to support individuals to live independently and make decisions independently. And now they bring all these uh, independent assessments and whatnot. That sort of, you know, limits our ability to, you know, live the life we want to do. So it doesn't make sense. And I don't know if you agree with me, guys, but it does not make sense. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And the biggest issue that I saw with the um, independent assessment model that they had um, a few few big issues, actually. The whole thing was a big issue, to put it put it bluntly. But if you really break it down, um, it's dehumanizing to have someone come in and ask you what you can't do. And then, you know, you don't get any support, um, like psychological support from that, because I imagine that would be a very traumatizing thing to have someone come into your home, into your, like, personal space. And they basically comb through all of your conditions and requests with a fine tooth comb and just really it feels like it's quite invasive but also um, if you have people like observing you in your home um, you could have like a day where you know you're doing better um, and some and some days you, you do worse than others but if they catch you on a good day and your condition isn't as bad or something and they deem that to be not as um, severe, then your funding will get cut because that's what they they see. So there's a lot of issues with that model, and I'm glad they got rid of it. So I'm, in a way, I'm I'm kind of hanging out to see what this new model they're going to propose is, because I'd like to hope it's going to be quite different from what they first said they would do. Mm, yeah, yeah, that's right. We just got a comment here from Patricia. So she said that I'm ever so happy that the government has abandoned the new assessment criteria for the NDIS. What a disgrace that would make you reset things, man. Yeah, and I'm, I'm with you all the way. Yeah, look, I told you, to be honest with you, the government is working backwards. Um, and that's not a good thing to ask for with disability because uh, we need to be more inclusive, a more inclusive society. We need um, help from these governments. So for them to put a limitation on us is going to um, cause a burden between us and you know, society. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I feel a way you could make these people in government see the damage that their things, that their potential ideas are doing to people is to have them put them in, put them in a wheelchair or something and have them navigate around for a day, give them a lived, a lived experience of someone. It's not going to give them 100% view into the life of a person with a disability, but it will give them some perspective that is different from their own. And I feel because they don't understand what it's like to be disabled, that's why they can make these decisions about our lives so easy because they don't have that connection to, to disability. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, Timothy. Like, uh, like you said, you can put them on the wheelchair, make them live the, uh, the life of, uh, I guess, with disability for a day. But is that enough? It's, it's not enough. It does give them that perspective, but 
Just remember, uh, um, we're, we're sort of uh, in that situation, you know, most of our lives. And so it's not really much uh, getting perspective, but it's, it's, a, it's just understanding and educating yourself, you know, that we, we need support. And uh, you can't limit us from doing anything. Because uh, in saying that, we're going back to the medical model of disability where, where people see people with disability as being sick. And uh, once they sit there, they're unable to do anything or achieve anything. But rather, we want to live in the social model of disability where society is the one that who well, um, causes barriers for us. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Well, from my experience in um, occupational therapy, I think both models have like their good and bad. Like in my own practice, I'd use a mixed model. So I understand that, yes, disability can be like a physical thing with a person's body but that's not necessarily the entire reason why they can't do something like yes society is also a barrier but um when for instance if you have someone with um a chronic condition that you know can vary go up and down you have to have um, the understanding in place that there is like things in a person's body that um, can affect how they're able to, to do things but also a, a huge part of that is society because um if again if we use the example of chronic illness and somebody has a day where they're not able to like get out of bed um you make it so they can work from home or something you find ways to like adapt it yeah exactly what are what are your thoughts on that jonathan i think that It's planning process is not perfect, but I think the flaw in the government thinking that is that the NDIS is just an other form of welfare. So somehow we as a community to shift the dominant attitude of the government to convince them the NDIS is not the pension. It's about enabling us participants to live a full and complete life. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Just a comment from uh, Julie. Julie. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Great, outcome. Great outcome. Yes, it totally was. It totally was. So, yeah, uh, any final thoughts on this um, before we wrap up? No, I don't really have any final thoughts other than I just want to see what their next step is and see if it is any better than what they previously suggested because... You know, disability advocates, they work so hard to 
to get to this point and we really don't want to be given some alternative that's like worse than the initial thing that he suggested so yeah that's my thoughts for now no, that's good stuff. Like, good stuff. And also, look, um, there's really advocates uh, are out there, especially organizations that are advocating for the rights of people with disability. And uh, coming together as a collective and raising our voices, you know, to, I guess, scrape the independent assessments was really a highlight. Because uh, it, it recognizes that the importance of people with disability in the community, and it gives them, you know, the it gives people with disability the the chance, you know, raise their voice and make changes when they come together. And so, for all the disability advocates out there, just keep doing your thing. Um, you're doing a great job, so hats off to those organizations. And uh, yeah, we're all in this together. So, yeah, pretty good stuff. Yeah, well, you know, it's an ending point, right? My island is great. Independent says ones are dead, hopefully, but this is only the beginning of the path to a fair and the eyes. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't let off the pressure we need to use this victory and push the government to see disability more through the social model. But for now, I'm done in You've been watching Cribs at your weekly podcast mm. on everything disability. Join us next week for more Crib Chat. Bye, bye. See you guys. See you guys. Yeah. Bye. bye.